dominating the game at 14 minutes. They're going to be in a good spot, but can they do it this game? I'm not so sure. I have no idea, but on the other side, we have one more Prepare hero we kind of want to talk about, which is Batrider, because this oh, yeah. is a hero that we used to see so much. Not as much anymore, but... What are you talking... Dude, he's 95% pick ban. That means almost still? every single game. No, yes. Still? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, but the difference is he's At not least banned 90. first anymore. Yes. Because during the qualifiers, it was like almost 100%. I think uh, it's definitely I, I less than 95%. I think that now. the Western teams fear him more than the Chinese teams. Yeah, yeah. Western meaning everybody but China. <laughs> That's how we yes. look at things in Dota because there's so many good Chinese teams. It's very easy to just say yeah. they're, these are the Chinese teams and these are the non-Chinese right. teams. So the Chinese teams, there's five in the top eight right now. None of the teams that like, made it to TI that, that there's 16 teams, or well, basically more like 18 teams that came here. All of the Chinese made it through to top 10 or to top eight. They, they did amazing. They did a really, really good job. So proud of them. Um, they have a bit of a different. That's not always true. They don't always have a different play style, but um, they're been, well known to mixing. be very good. Yeah, it used to be very polarizing, but now everybody's pretty yeah. close. Yeah. Right, well, we didn't actually get to talk about Bat Rider, so we'll do it really quick. He has a skill called Firefly, which allows him to drop fire from behind him. He can run over cliffs with this. It does AOE damage. AOE meaning area of effect. So it does massive splash damage to lots of things if they run through the fire and it's very good for farming and it's very good for pulling creeps begins. away so what he might try to do at the start of the game here is he'll run over to this area and he'll grab the creeps and he'll make them follow him all the way back to safety and if he can do this Doesn't it means he's going to get a very safe amount of gold and experience oh they're actually switching up their lanes completely. Ooh, okay very interesting so they're probably doing this because they spotted out where vici gaming was laning and the reason that you change your lane sometimes is you want to make sure that you have a matchup advantage sometimes for example batrider would be very good against a doombringer in a 1v1 so vici gaming wants to make sure that they don't have a doom versus batrider oh wow look at this look what newbie's trying to do they're trying to do a batrider versus doom matchup because they know batrider can easily win that matchup and by win i mean he's going to get more last hits or creeps sometimes we call it cs so, so you can see up in the upper left last hits and denies you can see who has last hits who has denies if you get a last hit, you get a bit of gold, and this allows you to get an item. So what Barrider's going to try to do here is he's going to try to get way more last hits and denies than Doom. And since he has a good matchup, he has a better chance of getting more last hits and, last hits and denies. So for him, it would be very good to end up getting those. And Doom wants to stop him from doing that and try to get more of his own. So we'll see how this ends up for them. Yeah, and Batrider's main purpose in this game is to get a blink dagger so look for him to get that pretty much first item right off the bat this allows him to blink a very Dyer's short or, I should say, teleport a short attack. distance away instant teleportation where he can initiate with his ultimate which we haven't even talked about which is flaming lasso which brings a hero back towards where you're going you can pull yep. them wherever you want to go for a couple of seconds one of the most game breaking ultimates in the game by far and it's most the most feared because you can just come out of nowhere pick somebody off right off the bat and it's a five on four just like that so look for him to try to get that item which is 21 gold bottom lane though this is wow. interesting i'm not used to seeing tide hunter in a tri lane which yeah. I means triple lane and the reason you don't Denied. always do this is because a hero like tide hunter needs a lot of levels right perch yeah he really does actually he needs to get to level six before he becomes really strong and he's almost never played a support actually almost every team plays him as a solo so like the way batrider is laning right now he has an entire solo lane to himself so he's by himself Normally we see Tidehunter in that position. We have a rune spawning. Rune spawn every two minutes. It's going to be a regen rune here. They won't actually need this, but they can protect it and try to help Regen their mid hero grab it if he needs to. But yeah, they're just going to waste it. They don't need it to be here. They're going to snag the regen and they'll swing back to lane now. Um, to point out uh, wards really quick, we talked about this last game, so it won't be too explanatory, but these give vision on the map. If we take a look at all the vision of the Radiant team, as you can see, this ward gives them vision. It's blocked by trees that are next to it, but it spots a lot of this common area that's ran through. So they ended up seeing the supports swinging all the way back around. So very cool, though. So we're going to see San Sheng, the Tide Hunter. He's shifting to the top lane. So this is tricky. They knew that there was probably a ward here. They ran one of their supports back down. So if they spot the Shadow Demon, they're going to think that both supports are still here. But what really happened was Tide Hunter, all tricky-like, is snaking all the way to the top lane and if you can get here when Batrider is going on the doom and you can get a little slow on top of him and it could be a kill here comes the nope no nope way. all right well his first I hyped that up and yeah. for nothing <laughs> oh he almost does it, oh, it looks like he's about to sneeze but just doesn't quite get in range in fact I think he canceled it but his he first did. ability is called gush it's basically just a single target nuke that you can apply to this doom in lane if you want it slows them it deals damage it lowers their armor and in combination with sticky napalm which you might see Batrider use constantly which is this black goo uh, slows them quite a bit. In fact, the biggest thing that we really haven't talked about with Sticky Napalm is when you apply it, it's very difficult to run away because you have to turn, yeah. and it changes your turn rate to be much, much slower. Yeah. All heroes in Dota have a turn radius, which means our turn rate, so how fast your hero can turn around. 
and this makes it so it takes a very, very long time to turn on. It's very, very rough. So it looks like uh, Newbie might be getting ganked here on the bot lane. Smart gank was being used. Sprout not going to land, actually, how back, backs up just in time here. And they want to defend this tower. That's so important that he didn't die there. It would have been really bad for him if he did. Yeah, and what was trying to be happening there was Siler on this Nature's Prophet was trying to sprout him. That's his first ability. Yep. It surrounds a target in trees. They could get out if they have a... Yeah, actually, he has six he tangos. He would have been ready, but... He could just eat those up and out of the guild. We see a destruction come out here. Not really any real setup. Ancient Apparition is just standing there, though, First knowing that he's going to die. Tries to get as much damage as possible, but will fall Oh, this end. is good. And Vengeful Spirit on the run. Of course, Batrider has now teleported to wow. the aid of his team. That's two kills right off the bat from Newbie. Attack. They are just... This is amazing. I, I can't even begin to explain uh, how well this team has been playing the past yeah. few days. That was cool for multiple reasons, by the way. First things first, they shifted the Batrider down here to get a kill. That was great. We have some stuff going on mid. Looks oh like Super God. is going to end up dying. Who oh. gets the kill on him? That's really good for him. He's going to level up these supports a bit, but him killing the Ember Spirit means his Snowball will go up. He gets experience with it. He hits level 6, and the Ember Spirit's only level 4, almost level 5. So now he has a full level advantage over his opponent, which means his ability to kill this guy when he comes back to lane is very high. And when but, you die, keep in mind, you do lose a lot of gold. Or not, not necessarily a lot of gold tower. in this case. It's a lot of gold considering you don't have much. And then you, you're, you'll you come back to life in God knows how many seconds. It depends on how high level you are. The, long, the higher level you are, the longer it will take. And like you said, this basically won the lane for, for this Viper here. And of course, Tango is an item, as we can click on Luna or somebody like yep. that. It's a very early game item. You can put these, or you can use them on trees, which will heal over time. And it will also kill the trees, meaning the Sprout isn't nearly as effective. Which is actually why Sprout is kind of better late game, because a lot of times you won't be having you won't yeah. be having a Tango or anything like that inside your inventory. Yeah, now I want to explain a little bit how cool that gank was that Batrider did. He came at level 4, which is much earlier than you normally expect because you don't have your ulti. But by getting that kill, it allowed him to stay in the lane, and they basically rotated the lanes because of this. So not only did he come to the bot lane, but he got a kill out of it, which means that he didn't waste very much time. And this is super important because if you waste time in Dota, Dyer's it's time that you could be spending farming or getting last hits or getting experience, advancing your team's cause, essentially. So by shifting like that, it allowed the Luna to TP to the top lane, and they changed their lanes up. Xiaoyi actually make it a bit a mistake. He wow. does end up going down. That was a pretty big error, actually. He got within range of Fenrir's, the Vengeful Spirit's magic missile. The stun landed, and they were able to right-click him down very easily. Three ranged heroes with chilling touch means a lot of magic damage and being done. And Venge Vengeance Orb. Yes. Don't forget. Of course, that's not that much right now. But Gives him about six apiece. It's not bad. This tower's going to go down one way or another. What Newbie's going to try to do is deny it. Are they going to be able to do it? No. And what a denial fun. means. Oh, we might have a stun here. No. Just a stun and means, run. Uh, means when somebody asks you on a date, right? And then you tell them, no, yeah, I don't you like wrecked. you. Got wrecked. Get now, wrecked, get denied. What it actually does is, if you deny a tower, normally when a tower goes down, it gives it gives your enemy team 200 gold apiece. And whoever gets the last take, it's about 400 or so, maybe 450. If you deny the tower, your enemy team only gets 100 gold apiece. So it's a difference of 500 to 800 gold. That's a huge amount of farm in the early game. So being able to deny that tower is big. We might see a kill in the mid lane. Ooh, that's the last one. He's going to pull Doom backwards. Ulti and RTK, he's in so much trouble. He's going to cast the Doom, trying to kill him. Moo actually oh. might end up going down the Vipers is in trouble. He gets disrupted by a banana. Trying to keep him alive. He comes back. Mu will end up going down. I think no. Okay, he does end up dying. He buys out right before he dies. And that means he spent all of his gold, which means there was nothing left over for him to lose, most likely, before he died. So really nicely done by him. Uh, two for one. Maybe he didn't, actually. I'm not sure, but... Oh, and you're right. They got two kills instead of one. So if you see two heroes die instead of one, it's almost always the good trade. We'll tell you if it's not, but two for one. Really good trade well, for newbie. Generally speaking, like... Just piggybacking off of what Purge just said. If it's a support hero, meaning a hero that you don't really need too much gold on, don't need too much experience on, such as the Vengeful Spirit as an example, that is not a fair trade when that is versus, let's say, a Luna, who's the, yeah. the hero for newbie in the middle at the top of the screen that wants to get a lot of gold and experience. Yeah. But they're, they're definitely in favor of newbie. It is now a 5-3 to three advantage, and they're just continuing to play really well. Siler, on this Nature's Prophet, this is a great thing about Nature's Prophet. Uh, you're talking about how... If you're doing a, a tri lane, you're going to be sharing the experience with your teammates. So if you're alone getting all the experience, you're going to get a hell of a lot more than if you share it. And a great thing about Nature's Prophet, once you start laning, you can come back in the jungle at any time because of his Nature's Call ability, where he creates tree ants of his bidding, where they can choose whatever they want to do, take yeah. the damage for him. He can go into the jungle, get solo experience for himself, and G Game is going to use a smoke. This is
Okay. It's gonna be interesting. So again, Doom this is, is not up though. This is the item that makes you invisible to wards. There's actually no wards from Vici Gaming or Newbie. Actually, there was one here. I don't know if that spotted them or not, but they're gonna try to kill Viper on the bot lane here. He's gonna most likely get Doom to start things off with a stun and maybe a Sprout. Almost catching up there. The Sprout. He's done that ALP. There's the Doom. There's the nukes. He's gonna end up getting killed really quickly here. Nice initiation from Vici Gaming. A gush on. The Doombringer as well. Banana wants to disrupt this, but it's not very safe. They don't even have six on Tyranter yet, so they can't fight this. Right, that was a um, big fight for VG. It may yeah. not look like it because they only got one kill, but keep in mind, all this gold was spent to buy teleportations. Three people out of lane, meaning they're not yeah. getting any experience or gold. And the pressure Ooh. is going to continue to be applied by VG. He's going to initiate on a Tyranter. Remember, he doesn't have his ultimate still, so he's pretty much useless in these fights. He is going to fall. RLTK on this Doombringer uses his stun ability that he got from a creep that he ate because it's so delicious. They're going to attempt to run away. Oh, so oh Emperor Spirit in quite a bit of trouble. He has four stacks of sticking napalm. The Ancient Apparition holds up again. This is the second time it was used. And Viper dies for a second time in a row. Doom will fall. A bunch of people are dying. In fact, Ember Spirit buys back into the game. Oh, not a good choice. Terrible move from Vici Game. Wow. So talk about why that's so significant when you buy back and then die immediately yeah. after. Yeah, when you buy out, you're spending gold to immediately respawn because you think that you can accomplish something in that short time period. I mean, they only die for 25 seconds. He thought, I can come back immediately and fight. He has an ability that drops a fire remnant on the ground, so he dropped one before he died, and then he teleported back to it as soon as he bought back. So he spends about... 350 gold just to buy back. He lost gold the first time he died. He spent Radiant's 350 gold on top of that, and then he dies attack. again. So he basically lost Radiant all of the gold in his bank. He's one, four, and three right now, which means he's died way more times. Deaths is the second number. He's died way more times than he's gotten kills, which means he's in a really bad spot right now. His ability to snowball is gone for a very, very long time, and this game looks firmly in newbie's favor. Yeah, not looking good, but of course things can change because this is Dota 2 after all, but yes. look at Batrider. He has a Blink Dagger, so this is what we were talking about. Of course, when we talk about killing spree before we get to the Blink Dagger, when you're on a higher kill streak, you end up giving more gold to the opponent. So let's say you have a 10 kill streak, that gives a lot of gold. So it's kind of yeah. like putting a bounty on somebody's head. Just yep. like in real life. <laughs> but Batrider, which I want to talk about, he has the Blink Dagger. Oh my gosh. To initiate. Doesn't look like he's going to be in range this time, but this is the item he needs. He's gonna after this, he'll probably get with an item called the Force Staff, which he's building towards now, which is another, it's kind of a pseudo blink of sorts. You can use it on yourself yeah. or a teammate, and it'll push them forward or in the direction, or an enemy, that's right. It'll push them in the direction that they're facing. So this in combination with the Blink Dagger means that he's going to have ultra mobility, and his lasso, man, we're going to see that come yeah. to full effect. He'll, he'll blink forward, and he'll grab somebody with his lasso, and he'll Force Staff himself to pull that enemy towards his allies, and basically hopefully kill them. So uh, the kill, again. the kill, killing spree. By the way, Luna's on a killing spree of five, zero, and two right now. That means if Luna gets killed, she'll lose a lot of gold. It's very important that she gets um, a good, a good, uh, a good start and doesn't end up dying. Oh boy! So a smoke was used, meaning they're invisible only to the mini map, but. Now Batrider picks up an actual invisibility Ooh. room. They're smoking too, oh, actually. He's going to spot him. San Chang gets revealed. He's got a Ravage in case he needs to ulti this. Here comes Moza. He only gets one, actually, because he's invisible. He's in trouble. Almost Ravages, but gets stunned. Ends up going down, so a free kill there. And Batrider breaks the invisibility. Interesting. Yeah. Looking, he was thinking about going in, but thought better of it. Of course, keep in mind, guys, when Tidehunter, he had his ultimate Ravage, but you don't want to just waste that because yeah. he would have died anyway. And when you have a big-time ultimate like that, chances are it's on a very long cooldown, which this one is. 150 seconds that yeah. they wouldn't have it. It's two and a half minutes. It's a very long time. You want to make sure that your team can follow up on it. And if he would have casted that, that was the end of his life. And they just saved it and said, now he respawns immediately. He can run back across the map and they can try to start a fight. And they should be in a fairly okay position. So um, it's good that he uh, that he saved it, I think. Because um, he can go and fight now. Yeah, and of course, when they use it, the other team's going to be like, oh, he has no rabbit. Let's just push. But they're going to do that anyway, actually. Vici Gaming pushing towards this top lane. They have two... Or actually only one tower. I thought they had mid, but no, they only have one tower to speak of. They have a decent pushing team thanks to this yeah. nature's profit. And let's see, Vengeful Spirit is sick, so watch for this swap. Radiance we also have Doom on Doom. Who's gonna attack. TP in? He's gonna attack a couple creeps. They might try to wrap around, but Zhao Wei, the Batrider, and the Titans are coming from the side. Here comes the blink any moment. on Siler. Can they kill him at the start of the fight? Might great swap that's gonna stop the Batrider. Oh, no. Nailed he comes in. It is gonna get disrupted. That might keep him alive. No, he's gonna go down. Ravage comes in. It's a lot of heroes. The ancient Everson falls as well. Doom right for his life. How on the backside is right clicking people. Super's gonna die to the poison here. But will the Luna fall? This will be a killing speed. Be really big for Zhao Wei. The poison comes through. Big juke. 
move. He's juking. RTK doesn't know where he's going. He has no idea where he is anymore. And now he's running for his life, but it's only a matter of time. I think they can get this kill. We'll see. Banana needs to cast more stacks here. If he gets Five more stacks with Shadow Poison, he... Oh, they're just going to give up. There it is. Doom's just going to walk away. He's really tanky attack. right now. He had a magic stick as well. This allows you to heal. You get charges based on how many spells your enemies cast around you. You'll see almost every single hero pick this up. In fact, Doom has one as well. He used all of his charges before he died. I'll watch for Ancient Apparition Ooh. ult here. This is big. This, this, this ulti, if it lands, it can kill people. Here comes How's dodging. He knows. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. That is so close. Yeah. Oh my you god. You can actually see it. If you look on the map, you'll see a little red light if it goes by towers. So that's how he knew it was coming. All of those players are very, very talented. They're watching the map and they end up seeing that it was coming. If that would have hit him, he would have died. So good 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 job hitting him. Let's talk about this item. First time in the game, we have a hand of Midas. Uh, you'll see these a lot for the finals coming up this weekend. What Radiance it does is it turns a creep into gold every 100 attack. seconds. Dyer's and it gives you about four times more gold than normally. We'll see a fight coming in though. AI Splash gonna land on two. Big Ice Splash. This is really bad for Nubi. Luna goes down. That was that killing spiel. 800 gold dropping. Another swap. Three kills for Vici Gaming coming back into the game. Every single kill for Vici, it seems like, is coming off of Ancient Apparition Dyer's ulti. Tower yeah. is under Such attack. a powerful ulti. He's been hitting it left, right, and center. The cooldown seems so low. It I is. don't remember it being this low. It's only 40 seconds, which is insane. And now Doom, with the help of those skills, not only does he have a mechanism to heal his team and himself, but he picks up a blink dagger which is coming from very shortly on the courier, meaning he can initiate. I would assume he has, oh, he actually has the critical strike creep. Dyer's top yeah. tower I was thinking he would have attack. the uh, centaur stomped actually be able to initiate but it's still a very good i mean just imagine the possibility you blink in you doom somebody they're out of the Dyer's fight completely middle so in a lot of attack. ways batrider and doom have the same kind of effect on the enemy because batrider actually brings you out of the fight physically and doombringer dooms you i mean you literally just can't do anything except auto attack which just means you're basically out of the fight yeah they'll probably try to do that Doom is looking for the initiation. Oh my gosh, he's so ready to go. Will he probably grab the Tide Hunter? Perhaps they're going in. Will he blink? There's the blink in. They're dooming on top of the Viper. Here's the gosh ravage in two seconds. Here comes the gets Styles. Perfect timing. But it gets removed. He can ravage now. Catches two big heroes just in time there. Fenrir we running for his life. The Ember Spear retreating as well. But I think we'll see the Vents go to Barrett. gets a double kill. Shadow Demon kills the Vengeful Spear. The Ember Spear is fighting for his life, but he's so slowed right now. A couple more poison attacks. The Doom ran out on the Viper, and the chase continues. Sticky Napalm being passing more. They're slowing him down. There's the Viper ulti. Viper's gonna end up dying. Good kill from the Ember Spear before he goes down. Doom gets another. Styler, the, the Nature's Prophet, buys back. He spends the gold because he can get the kills and a lot of dead heroes, and things get turned around. So, if we look at buybacks, how many people bought back? We saw one, one from the Nature's Prophet, but it was enough to turn things around. I think that was completely worth it there. Yeah, and Again, it's a very risky endeavor when you buy back because, first of all, you have to get to the fight somehow. But because your nature's profit, you can just teleport anywhere you want. That's beautifully done from the nature's profit player, which is Silar. Which I guess we haven't even talked about Silar. I believe he's the he used to be the carry player yes. all the time. Is he still? Because this is not. He a is. Carry he is their really. carry player. But it is weird for them to put this hero in the safe lane. This is the safe, the safe lane for the raiding team. This is the safe lane for the diary team. Um, it is okay for him to do this because he's just going to get an early item. He's going straight damage utility, and they're going to group up and push with it. So it's a little atypical, but once in a while, teams do do this. And keep in mind, guys, Nature's Prophet has a new item called Orchid of Malevolence. I always thought it was Orchid of Malevolence, but I guess that doesn't make any sense. When applied to an enemy here, it will silence them. Only their abilities it will silence. It will also deal any damage done to them while their silence will be amplified in, uh, so I'm actually looking who, who they want to use this on. Tidehunter. If they use it on Tidehunter, if they damage him, his Kraken yeah. shell will activate, meaning he will actually debuff that silence, meaning he can get his Gravage up. If he, if he gets lucky, but he's going the very smart build here. If you max this skill out, if you put a skill point in it every time you level up, his damage threshold to to proc it is lower. It's at 450. So that, and that's what happened in the last oh, fight. Boy. They used the silence on him at the perfect time, but then the Kraken shell removed the silence. Gonna be, oh, beautiful swap from Doom on Vengeful Spirit. Is he, he actually going to live because yeah. of this? Unbelievable. So you what see a the big defensive save. capabilities from Vengeful Spirit. And Tidehunter, poor Tidehunter. He's going to die. But as you can see from the exclamation point, that is a deny, meaning no gold yes. or experience goes the way of Beachy Gaming. So in all likelihood, that really doesn't mean that it's much. It's really important but, to point out that Doom is one of the few spells that lets you deny your ally. You can't kill your ally very often. It's only a three, four, five spells in the whole game. So the ability to kill him there was was not common. Don't think that that happens a lot. It was very easy to deny for newbie there because they were completely out of danger. But during team fights, it's really difficult to do, and it doesn't happen very often. 
Gucci Game. He's going to group up towards bottom lane. The tier 2 tower looks to be taking quite a bit of damage. And I don't believe that Newbie wants to defend this. I mean, Dyer's Ravage is up, though. Is but, of course, attack. no Blink Dagger on him. I mean, he has to just walk up and use it. Meaning, he can get silenced pretty easily. So this tier tower is going to be done for. Bottom tower and has yeah. They're just going to back up. The tower goes down, Vici Gaming takes the gold, Nature Swap gets the last hit, that's Siler getting a bit of a gold advantage. He's buying an Ogre Club, which means he's probably making a Black King Bar. This is an item we haven't actually seen yet, and what this does is it makes you magic immune when you use it for 10 seconds. And if you're magic immune, that means a lot of things like stuns don't hit you, disables don't hit you, slows don't hit you, Eclipse doesn't hit you, Ravage doesn't hit you. There's a lot of things on Newbie that they need to connect for their fight to go well, and if an important hero like Nature's Prophet doesn't get nailed by any of those. He's just going to right click for a lot of damage. So, yeah, but keep it's... in mind, there is one very important ability that does go through Black yes. King Bar, and that is Bat Rider's ultimate lasso. So, meaning he can just initiate and still pick you off. You can't do any magical damage to that target if they have uh, what we'll call BKB for the rest of the game activated. But the physical damage still comes through. So, see if that comes into effect this game. And keep in mind, Viper now has a mechanism. This, of course, is the. The, uh, the item that when you activate it, it will heal you and your team. But Doom has been almost consistently, I would say, dooming that Viper. I mean, he yeah. can't even use that mechanism, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah, if, especially if he can Doom him before he uses the mech at the start of the fight. It has a big cooldown, so if, if, he gets, if he gets to cast this before he gets Doomed, it's not a big deal. But if you can Doom him before... If, all right, if you Doom him after he mechs, it's not a big deal. If you Doom him before, that means he can't use that 2,000 gold to save his team. And it's a 250 HP heal, so if you look at some of these heroes, if they only have 900 HP, 250 is a big chunk of that. So getting a heal on top of that 900 HP they have could really save their life. So it's very important that Moo is able to use this while playing Viper. Bat Rider, did we talk about having the four staff he, he just it. got it okay so he, he didn't have it last time four staff combination. this is essentially the highest point Ooh, for he might be going in ember spear he has a lot of mobility but if they can catch him off guard with this lasso Ooh, he walked away just in time he was Good thinking about it this. It would have been hard to get the kill because Lasso only lasts for three and a half seconds. They actually don't have very good stuns. He's pretty much the only big stunner other than Ravage. So if he would have grabbed him, he would have had to pull him to him and then they would have had to kill him instantly because he probably had a fire remnant sitting somewhere on the map. There's actually one sitting right here. And what this means is he can teleport there for 150 mana. So if he's ever not stunned, he'll just teleport away and they knew that they weren't going to be able to get him, most likely with the heroes they had sitting there. So they just decided to back away. So. so as we talked about early, Nature's Prophet not, I mean, you, you can build him quite a few ways, but this is definitely going to be turning into a more of a right clicker, I meaning he's been dealing a lot of damage in the late game. He has the Black King Bar, as you talked about, along with the Orc and and this is a hero that can just farm so well because of his ultimate, one of the many reasons, of course, Wrath, Wrath of Nature. When used, it'll just, it's kind of like a chain lightning, but what do we call it? The, the uh, not sap, it wasn't sap, was it? Uh, Remember, chain uh, lightning, but with trees, what was the term you used? Pain Very lightning, but oh, uh, prophet, like yeah. mold, mold, uh, uh, plants, roots. Okay, we're just gonna forget about that. I, I don't remember. Either it, way, it's it, a it chain is a lightning, chain lightning, but with trees across the entire vines? map. Vines? Was it vines? Dyer's top it wasn't tower vines. Plants? Is under attack. Right, we're never Nature? Gonna, no, it was Nature lightning. It was, it was like sap. It? it was like sap, but not sap. sap. Huh. Uh, You're sap. Okay, whatever. Either way, looks like newbie is gonna be grouping up. Luna uses the Hannah Midas, getting a lot of yep. experience and gold as yeah. a result. It's very and good. She has a Black King Bar herself, so this is going to be really good for her. Yeah, it's very common for teams to buy Black King Bars because it helps you win team fights. And if you win team fights, you can generally take a tower right afterwards, which means you get gold from it as well. It doesn't make you do as much damage, but most people leverage their skills in the early game for damage, especially Luna. Most of her damage is coming from Eclipse, so she wants to be able to cast this and not die immediately. Ooh. Beachy Gaming is actually also, looking for newbie. It's quite important to know, although we're seeing a lot of Black King bars, we talked about how Bat Rider's ult will go through it. Well, there's a couple of Radiance abilities for Beachy Gaming that will go through it. Yeah. So Doom is the... Okay, this is an anomaly, so don't take this into... Like, don't think this is a very normal thing, but Doom goes... Not only does it go through BKB, it damages through BKB. Yeah. Very uncommon. But yep. also, Vengeful Spirit Ultimate, which doesn't do any damage, it's just a swap, also goes through Black King bar. So... There are some things that they can maneuver uh, use to oh, well, actually might have a push here. I, I yeah. thought they'd actually back up. The main thing they're saving swap for is when Batrider ultis somebody. If Batrider ultis somebody and Vengeful Spirit swaps them, it breaks the lasso. So it's a counter to Batrider, and it, 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 
it entirely nullifies his usefulness as a hero if Fenrir's in a good position and can swap whoever gets grabbed. So he's going to want to wait. He wants to sit behind whoever the, the carries are and they'll try to initiate. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, perfect hero. Oh, he grabs the one hero that can stop and he ends up going down. The Luna does end up getting doomed. He's running for his life. Mech comes through though and this is a really good fight for Newbie. They get one more kill out of this. Oh, big mistake from Styler. He accidentally sprouts his teammate. Oh, that was such a mistake. But oh my oh! gosh, the damage. What an ulti from <laughs> FY. Ancient Apparition, can they clean up anything? Oh my god. That was looking so bad for them, but FY lands a three-man Ice Blast, and they're gonna clean up from this. Ancient Apparition MVP all the way. He does die, but it doesn't really matter. Newbie is forced to buy back. It turns into now a one versus two somehow, and Tidehunter trying to teleport out. Looks like he will not get away. A full team wipe for Vici Gaming. How many bought back? Only one, and it was bad for yeah. Newbie. So that they lost how many? Uh, three for Vici and six Dyer's died for Newbie. That fight was attack. so good for Vici. As I was Dyer's explaining the the Venge, remember, Barretta went on him. There's nobody that can swap cancel that. So that guarantees that you can kill one person at the start of the match. It Dyer's looks so good, and then they accidentally sprouted fallen. the Doombringer as well, which prevented him from running away. And it looks so good for them. But when you see weakness as a Dota player, you focus on it, and sometimes too hard. And that's what Newbie did. They ended up getting grouped up, and because of it. The Ice Blast landed on four heroes, so they made that huge mistake and allowed them to blow up two heroes right at the start right. of the fight. It was really well played by Vici Gaming and, um, and keep in most, mind, a lot of mistake by Newbie. But Spirit Ultimate is not like an automatic thing to be able to cancel because look at the yeah. range if you can highlight it. It's not very long right now. So because of that Blink Dagger and Force F, I mean, it was pretty difficult to cancel it, although these are very high level players, obviously. But once his Vengeful Spirit hits the next level, which is level 11, you'll get your ultimate at 6, 11, and 16. The range goes up considerably, and then that's when you really have to worry about Vengeful Spirit. I thought they used too much to kill her in that particular instance, and as you talked about, just grouped up and AA ult every single time. It's gonna, everybody's gonna think this is the most ridiculous ultimate in the game. It is now level two, meaning he's level 11 overall, uh -huh. and this is gonna hurt like a mother. Yeah. Again, it does 350 magic damage and also does 20 damage per second for 9 seconds. So it actually does about 550 magic damage. That's amazing. Yeah. And it prevents healing while the buff is on people. So if he can land that on heroes like Viper, Viper can't heal himself with his mechanism. So this is looking good for Vici. This is Roshan. This is the big three that's on the map. When you kill it, it drops an Aegis, which allows one of you guys to respawn. Who's going to get it, though? It's going to die. Who thinks that? Ever Spear grabs it. Raiding gets the last chase. Barretter dies right at the start. This is looking really good for Vici Gaming. They might be on the chase team. They're going in. Nope, there's the mech. Where's the chase? BKB on Siler. There's the Sprout on the Luna. Luna can doom. Not good for Newbie. Oh! I fall. Great disruption from Banana. Saves him just in time. But he's still going to end up falling there. Banana's going to pay as well. That's the Shadow Demon going down. Tied under retreating. They didn't have Ravage. They weren't ready for that fight. But they lost three heroes for nothing. And now with that Aegis, who's sitting on it again? Ember Spirit. Uh, Ember Spirit, the hero they wanted. If he dies, he respawns in five seconds without losing Dyer's anything. So it gives him an extra hero attack. in this fight. This is really bad for Newbie. They can't defend this. They've got three dead heroes. And Vici Gaming looks like they're going to take Dyer's a Rax in the middle, middle of the map. Yeah, this might be a close. Uh, it was Dyer's not a 14 minute game this time, but Vici Gaming attack. all of a sudden just Dyer's dominating. Yeah. And a lot of it had to do with the fight previous to this. But like you talked about, Roshan, you kill him, you get a ton of experience and gold, and he drops that Aegis of the Immortal, which Ember Spirit now has. Who has a couple of damage, or one damage item, I should Dyer's say. And he is just going to snowball attack. to his heart's content. There's the second damage item. So he has cleave with battle theory, meaning you do splash damage to creeps and heroes. And center, and he's close by. And oh, big block. Frank item. Here we go. Initiation. Boom. Getting destroyed. Right off the bat, he finds back. The Viper is back in the game. A little bit too deep goes Venture Spear. The ultimate from Shaft even used on him. Interesting choice. Ends up dying. It's a one for one at the end of the day. There's a big round break. Here's some the AA ult. It's going to destroy Titan Hunter right off the bat. But Vici Gaming needs to run. They got the racks. They need to get out of here. They get what they came for. Ember Spirit will die. Of course, he has the Aegis of the Immortal. He has only one Spirit up, I believe. They, they could kill him. Yeah. Viper doesn't have to for another 20 seconds. He's always got to be careful. Barret is running. He's going to continue slowing him. He does need that one spear here. Here comes the slow and the right clicks. And they kill right here. This is so big. Oh my God. Nuke, how? Good disruption. Oh, oh sick plays from Newbie there. The Shadow Demon at the last second, right when it looked like he could get the kill, he banishes his ally. Banana, one of the best supports in the world. This guy is so good. Perfect timing on that. And he ends up saving his ally and guaranteeing the kill. So not only did Newbie win that team fight, all right, they got double racks, which is horrible. Yeah.
but they killed Ember Spirit and they wasted his Aegis. If, he's, if you're the last person alive and you have an Aegis, it's not useful for that reason because there's so many heroes up, they can use their abilities to kite you or basically run away from you and prevent, prevent you from initiating. We have an AI's Blast. Oh, well God. land. Oh, oh, that's a kill. He's going to banish dead. himself. We'll he's see, we'll dead. see. Yeah, he's going to die. One nice tick and he goes. 10% wow. HP and you go down. Nice snipe there from FY, playing Ancient Apparition. FY. Global Holy ability, geez, really useful. And he's got an Aghanim Scepter now. Are and, you serious? Uh, oh yes. Lord. This is an item we haven't seen yet on the main stage here, but what it does is it makes his ability, his ulti, better. It lasts for 17 seconds. So I told you about that ice ticking duration. It lasts for 17 instead of 9. So he has 17 seconds to tick their HP to a low amount, and he's just going to ulti randomly on the map to lower HP and do some damage. Now, tell me about Raxus. Why is it so bad that Newbie lost 2? Okay, well, first of all, this is something that you... Best case scenario, you get this early because it is so difficult Radiance to come back bottom from. So, tower every 30 attack. seconds, as we talked about before, the creeps will spawn in each respective lane. And now that the racks are down, meaning there's a melee barracks and a range barracks, the melee creeps and the range creeps will be upgraded. Look at how beefy these guys are. And not so only are, do they have more health, not only do they do more damage, but they actually give less gold now as well, meaning there's less comeback for newbie to make. But top lane, you can see only one of the two racks got killed, but it was the important one, because look at every lane. There are more melee creeps, there's four melee creeps and one range creep at this stage of the game, meaning the melee creeps are dealing a ton of damage in top lane as well. So both top and mid will consistently push, meaning newbie, I, I, honestly, I don't want to make it seem like the game is completely over, but it is almost to that point. I don't know yeah. how they come back from this. I mean, Tidehunter now has his initiation, but I feel like it's just a little bit too late, because remember, Ember Spirit, Going up against this hero late game is just dirty. Like It's really it's tough difficult. late game. Because he scales so well with items because of his sleight of fist skill. It's the one where he jumps around the map and you hear a bunch of slashing noises. He can use it every six seconds. It gives him one auto attack on every unit and hero. And because he buys a Battle Fury, that means when he hits things, it cleaves. So watch these little these dudes. They're going to all take damage pretty evenly. You see how their HP is all going down at the same time? It's because every time he slashes, his Battle Fury cleaves some of that slash to another hero. And it just ends up doing a lot of damage. So so cleave damage is very good with Sleight of Fist, and it is very difficult to play against for Newbie. And because two of the racks are down, I mean, these waves are just constantly pushing. They're going to have trouble leaving their base. This means that pretty much all of this area is going to be Vichy's to farm, which means they're going to get more gold gain than Newbie will now. And if we look at the graphs, they are at a big advantage of 15k, but this is just going to keep inching up because they have more to farm in the back. Right, and keep in mind, critical strike now on Ember Spirit, meaning... Let's see, he does about, okay, so, <clears throat> sorry, he does about half damage, I believe, to creeps, right? So, yes. he does around, let's just say, let's just go for the low end, 600 damage to a hero, if he's able to proc that. If he gets lucky on the, the crit, strike. yes. Shadow Demon right now has 948 health, so almost able to one-shot him. Of course, this is only 30 minutes in the game, so if this goes on for another 10, 20 minutes, Ember Spirit, the more items he gets, the more ridiculous he's going to hit for. And, again, newbie on the back foot here. I mean, a lot of times you don't want to just play a losing game, so to speak. If you know you're going to lose, you want to just concede, save some energy for the next game. This looks like it's going to be one for one. Well, they've got pretty good heroes to try to come back. They have very good team fight. They have a very good team fight initiator on Batrider. If your opponents make any mistakes, Batrider forces their deaths, essentially. And with Tidehunter Ravage and Eclipse, they have so much damage. And even their carries doing well, 10, 4, and 9. How has very good Dyer's net worth. He's second highest in the game. Attack. But the rest of the players on his team are not doing so hot. The, the main issue with their draft, or with their game so far, is that the Viper has been having some trouble. He's dying more than he's getting kills. And this is just a Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Banana's going to die. So that combination, attack. which we haven't brought up, that's the AA Ice Blast, of course, that you guys have seen to death. In addition to Wrath of Nature from Nature's Prophet, Chain Lightning, Sap, or whatever you want to call it. Ooh, it's going to be close. He might live. It's going to be close. Ooh, he's going to live. He's going to live. Oh, my goodness gracious. We hear a Doom coming off. It's going to be on Viper. If you're able to get this out without him buying back, it's going to be pretty attack. huge. 70 seconds on the sidelines for that Viper. And now Luna has the BKB activated, trying to go for the support Vengeful Spirit. There's the beautiful Rabbit. Is this going to be a No! The critical strike destroys Luna. The good game comes out for Newbie. This is going to a game. 1-1. One, one. Game 2 coming up in the second. Vichy Gaming takes Game 2. Newbie goes down. And they want to go to the winner bracket finals. Both teams do, I'm sure. But that looked really good for Vichy. Newbie, I feel like, caught him off guard extremely hard in Game 1. But after that second game, it looks like a good game for Vichy. I think... I think they have the better shot of winning this, personally. I don't know how you feel about it. They but looked very solid. Just they were good, but it wasn't amazing. Like they, they were warm.